Hello and welcome to another episode of Quasi's Corner with me, Quasi. Today, I am joined by the venerable Michael Thomas, and he's here today to tell us about the TD17, and it's about the three iterations. But that's all you're going to get for now. Up next. So, Michael, what is your role with Roland? So, my role with Roland is to essentially look after V-drums for the whole UK. Okay. So, that means uh, TD drum kits, things like SPDSX, things like hybrid products. Nice it's to uh, bring that to the masses. Okay, so you, you go basically up and down the country teaching plebs like us how to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> how to better control our kits and, and get the best out of them. Pretty much, yeah. Bits. Get the best out of them is the, the main thing. Nice, yeah. nice. So today we have three iterations of the kit that we're talking about, two of which are in store. Um, we have the TD17KL, the TD17KV, and TD17KVX. The TD17, um, yep. it's fairly new on the market. I think it came out last year. Yep, yeah, April last year. Okay, wow, time's passed quick. <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> it sounds great. I mean, we did a, a pretty layman's demo a few months ago, um, and we got some good sounds out of it, yep. but, um, we've just had it here on the PM200 and it sounds like a completely different beast. Um, it sounds not far from the old TD30 that right. came, that, that was, yeah. I am right, TD30, right? Yeah. So, where does this technology come from? So the TD17's sound engine is derived actually from the TD50, which go. TD50 is uh, Roland's current flagship V-Drums kit. Yeah and the samples in there are prismatic, which means that you get a lot more reaction, tone, from how you play, rather than what the sample is. So okay. the, the way that that works is if you hit harder, then the sample reacts to you hitting harder, right. rather than just hitting a peak. So basically, the TD17 is a squeezed down, kind of compact version of the TD50. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So yeah. that's bi basically bypassed the TD30. Pretty so, much, yeah, so you straight off. Them. What would you say are the key features which would differentiate this from uh, other kits of different brands in its kind of price point? So there are quite a few differences, if I'm honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bluetooth being one. Yeah. I mean, you know, to connect to YouTube and to, you know, just stream music over your TD17 without the use of wires. And this little lip here is exactly for that. So if you've got your iPad there, if you've got your iPhone, you just pop it on there and it doesn't fall off. Okay. So layer in as well. So the TD17, even on the KL version, you can layer your samples, which you can do on the TD50 as well. So the best way to describe that is if you want to clap sound under your snare drum, if you want to beef up your bass drum, right. you can add layers to it and you can in just enhance your electric sound. Wow, wow. So 17KL is really for the person who's you know not really interested in Bluetooth, may not even have a Bluetooth phone, for example. Right. You know you can still connect your phone or laptop mm. up and play your favourite songs through it via the mix input on the back. Right. Um, it's got rubber pads, which some people prefer to mesh heads, really. Um, but you still get a mesh head snare, you know, for the, the real feel. Symbols are, are basic symbols as well, but I mean for around an 800 pound price mark. What would you say about the pads that are provided with the CD, TD17KL? So with the TD17KL, they've been slightly adapted. Right. The, the material's been slightly changed. Yeah. But, you know, they still react and feel great. They're not as hard as, uh, as back exactly. in the day. Yeah. <laughs> definitely not, <laughs> definitely not. If you felt like you're hitting pieces of slab or something, I don't know. Mm. Who would you recommend this to if, uh, like say for instance a, a kid or a, someone who's getting the first electronic kit? Yeah, yeah, first electronic kit for a TD17KL would be incredible. I mean mm -hmm. like, 
even though you, you don't have the Bluetooth, you still have the layering capabilities that the 17 KV KVX has. Mm -hmm. The only thing you're downgrading for really is the pads. Indeed. Um, and is that that's upgradable over time, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. You can you can upgrade all the pads over time. You could upgrade to a 17 KVX if you really wanted to. Okay. Okay. So next up we have the TD 17 KV. Yep. Uh, which is the next level up, the mid. Yeah. What do you call that? The mid range. The mid range mid -range. version of the TD 17s. Yeah. Um, what does that feature? And who would that appeal to? So firstly, the big difference in that is Bluetooth. Right. Um, so the 17 KV module now has Bluetooth. Right. Um, which obviously means you can connect your iPhone, your Android phone wirelessly to your module. Indeed. And stream the audio through into your speaker, your headphones, whatever mm -hmm. you've got connected mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. The other difference between the 17 KL and the KV is the mesh pads. So, like we mentioned with the KL, some people aren't bothered, but a lot of people are. Yeah. So the mesh heads feel more like an acoustic drum head. You can okay. tighten, you can alter the tension of them. Mm -hmm. So you've got PDX-8s, and they've been on rolling kits for a good while. Yes. Yeah. Um, but with the upgrade, the KV, you get this snare as well. Can yeah. you tell us a bit more about it? Yeah, so the snare is a PDX-12. It's 12 inch. Right. And the guys in Japan, they measured the rim of over 100 snare drums and so this rim is the average uh, size of all those snare drums what? so that the, the time and effort that the guys in Japan take on B drums kits is, is quite something so is that available separately if someone wanted to upgrade yes from the TD KL yeah. yeah yeah there isn't actually any other feature on the KL and the KV that mm -hmm. is different so you get the same kick pad across the whole range mm -hmm. which is the new KD10 uh, the FD9 with the 17 KV and the 17 KVL is also the same. Okay. It's uh, a quieter design than the uh, the previous FD8. Yeah. Um, and they come with the same cymbal pads as well. Okay. So yes, I remember the FD8 did make quite a bit of noise. Yeah. Uh, that's the. Uh, is that both pedals? The FD8 or it's it's just the hi hat pedal, right? Just the hi hat pedal. Yeah. Yeah. That 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 made that kind of clicking noise. Yeah. That, that got to me. <laughs> But uh, okay, so they're a lot quieter, mm -hmm. um, and for those of you who stamp, um, this works quite well, would you say? Yeah, yeah, it works perfect. I'm the total opposite to you, I play heel up. There you go. So uh, yeah, it works well for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so next up we have uh, the TD-17 KVX, yep. which is the big boy of the situation. It has obviously everything upgraded, all the bells and whistles, everything. So would you mind telling us who that would appeal to and what it has that the other two iterations don't have? Okay, so really I would say this is aimed at anyone and everyone. It comes with all mesh heads, as does the KV, but on the KVX you get hi-hats. Right. So rather than have it you know, separate, it would need to be mounted on a hi-hat stand. Okay, which, which comes separately, guys, just so you know. Also, uh, you get upgraded cymbals as well. Mm -hmm. So rather than uh, the CY8s, which come with the 17 KL and the KV, you mm -hmm. get four fully circular cymbals, which uh, you are a lot more sensitive and react a lot more like acoustic cymbals would. Um, everything else pretty much remains the same, but you do okay. get an extra crash cymbal as well. Oh, nice. Uh, the upgraded crash cymbal yes. as well. Yeah. Okay. The difference between CY8s and the ones that you have there are quite significant in terms of sensitivity, etc. Yeah, I'd say that, yeah. I mean, the biggest difference you'll notice is the ride cymbal. So the ride cymbal and it gives you the bell sound as well. Right. So whereas the CY8, it does pick up uh, around near the bell, where a bell sound would be. Yeah. But on the CY13R, um, you do get a particular bell shape. Okay. And when you strike that area, a bell sound will will play. Indeed. Indeed. Okay, so we've had a look at uh, all three iterations of this kit, which is great. Thank you for that, Michael. Um, and hopefully now we have uh, a better idea of what we would be going for um, according to which price point suits us and for what use. I mean, I know what I would want to go for, but what I could afford may be totally different. 
So these things are to be taken into consideration. Um, but like I said, that's just me. Hopefully, if you get, for you guys, you'd have a better idea now, based on what you know what there is, because there's a lot of models going out there. Roll and churn out models. Um, like sweets it's great isn't it <laughs> <laughs> hopefully Michael's given us a really good account of um, what there is so that you can make an informed decision uh, going forward and uh, for the next purchase of your electronic kit whether it be the first one that you have ever or an upgrade so uh, this is a been really informative for me because I know now what I can get <laughs> And thanks for watching. Uh, we hope you liked what you've seen here. We hope whatever you have seen here about the C17s has been useful. Thanks again to Michael for coming along. Thanks Thank for you. Having me. And uh, please do like, subscribe. Let us know what you think um, of this video. Is the T17 KL relevant to you? Or is it the KV or is it the KVX? What do you think right now, based on your current situation, would work for you? Let us know in the comments below and we'll be sure to get back unless you're a troll. <laughs>